Hello and welcome to the PFF Fantasy Podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Yaki. We just had a full week of preseason games. I know a lot of backups played in those games, but there were a couple of games where the starters played, so I do have a number of takeaways, and I will be going over the top ones right now. And we will start with the Tennessee Titans, where at running back, we saw Tony Pollard take all 10 snaps on the first drive with the starters, which was pretty alarming for anyone who uh, is trusting in Tajay Spears having a significant role this season. Uh, Then we saw Spears take seven of the eight snaps on the second drive with the starters still in the game. And then Spears came back in with the backups for just three plays, uh, was the primary uh, runner slash target on all three of them. And then he was done for the preseason. And I, in general, was not that alarmed for about the Titans backfield in this one. A lot of teams end up having their starting running back on the first drive, a backup running back on another drive, and they are not rotating their running backs how they usually see them in the regular season. This is pretty typical for most preseason teams. We even saw in the first week of the preseason the Titans do more or less what we do expect in the season, and that's the two of them rotating in and out every couple of plays with Pollard ending up with more snaps in rushing situations, Spears playing more in passing situations. Uh, Some people were also concerned about the fact that Pollard did take one snap on Spears' drive. It was a fourth and one play where it was a bit of a unique play. It was an unbalanced line where a tackle was lined up on next to the other tackle, two tight ends lined up, uh, one of them where the tackle usually lines up. A pretty specific play that I would not be surprised if the Titans have only practiced a little bit, and maybe it was just Pollard who has practiced that play before. If it was more of a a typical play, a run down the middle, outside zone, whatever it may be, where these running backs have run those plays hundreds of times in their career, then I would have been a little bit more alarming. But even then, I expect Pollard to take more of the short-yarded situations We just saw Spears, the play before on third and one, take a short yarded situation. So it seemed pretty clear that the running backs were just getting more experience in all of the kind of plays, not just the plays that um, we expect them to be in for. So I'm not reading too much into this split. Still expect it to be about 55% Pollard, 45% Spears. And if one of them were to get hurt at any point in the season, then the other one would be basically a must start in a feature role in this offense. So still happy to draft either of them and did not move either of them much in my rankings because of this game. Uh, The next backfield I want to cover is the Carolina Panthers. And with the Panthers basically want to cover everything in this offense because they were the most interesting team this week because they did not play their starters in their first two games, but did play their starters in one drive in this game. Uh, Starting with the running backs, we saw Chuba Hubbard play 10 of the 12 snaps, which was good to see. There was a little bit of concern that Miles Sanders could cut into this workload, make this more of a 50-50 backfield for as long as Jonathan Brooks is out. And Brooks, he's been on an injured list all preseason, not expecting him for the start of the season, and not sure when he will be back. And even when he's back, not sure how large his role will be with the Panthers initially. So uh, Hubbard, someone, a borderline fantasy starter over these first few weeks of the season. Um, And you can draft him much later than that. So I think he's kind of the perfect running back to draft if you're taking a lot of shots on younger running backs that are in these backfields that could evolve over the course of the season. Uh, Thinking a running back like Bucky Irving of the Buccaneers, uh, not someone that you want in your fantasy starting lineups week one, but someone who could take a larger role as the season progresses. So I think Hubbard's the perfect person if you went zero running back or hero running back and just need someone to get you through these first few weeks of the season. Uh, Then jumping to their wide receivers, everything went more or less how you would have expected them to go for this game. Deontay Johnson playing all 12 snaps with the starters, which is great. Um, Adam Thielen, 11 of 12 snaps, uh, missed one snap of the three and 12 personnel. So that's fine for him. Still played in the slot and three wide receiver sets. So his role is what you expect it to be at this point in the season. Uh, Jonathan Mingo taking most of the snaps in 11 personnel and that one snap in 12 personnel with uh, rookie Xavier Leggett playing two snaps with the starters. Uh, Both Mingo and Leggett continued to play on with the backups after this point. 
Uh, still okay taking a late round shot on the get in leagues. Not all that surprised he's not starting quite yet, but could very well see him overtake Mingo for those 11 personnel snaps. Also could start overtaking Thielen for the 12 personnel snaps, uh, especially considering Thielen's age. It would be surprising if he stayed as an every down wide receiver the entire season. So um, that's where the Panthers wide receivers are at. Did not move anyone in my rankings because of this, but it was still good to get a little bit more confidence that we're not going to be throwing a curveball week one and how they're using their wide receivers. Uh, last point is at tight end, Jatavian Sanders, their fourth round pick, played 10 of 12 snaps with the starters. Uh, Sanders has played significantly throughout this preseason. Um, the big note here is both their re- tight ends from last year, Tommy Trumbull, Ian Thomas, have been injured, missing the entire preseason. Um, I don't know how it'll shake out once those guys are healthy again. There's a chance that this could be some kind of big rotation that's uh, you completely want to avoid. But there's also a chance that Sanders has just outright won this tight end job in which case if he's playing 10 of 12 offensive snaps and uh, that high percentage, that's going to be a lot better situation than plenty of the other tight ends in the league. So a chance that Sanders is a breakout candidate for this year. So at least someone to keep an eye on, probably still not drafting him in most leagues, but I did move him up pretty significantly in my rankings, especially seeing that Sanders did not play with the backups in this one. He only played in the starters. So that was a pretty good sign for him. Uh, Before moving on to other wide receivers, I do want to shout out our sponsor for this podcast, DraftKings. We had the appetizer last week. Now it's time to feast. College football is back. Don't miss any of the action. Jump into DraftKings Sportsbook. It's a full slate of games for week one, including a big matchup in Atlanta between the preseason number one and number 16. Uh, DraftKings is the number one place to bet touchdowns. They currently have the most touchdown markets offered and lead in touchdown futures and season specials. Uh, Touchdowns can be scored on the ground, through the air, or on a defensive effort, any of those methods resulting in a big win. This is going to be DraftKings' biggest college football season to date. Enjoy the ride now, all the way through the expanded playoffs. Plus, all newbies getting into the college spirit, here's something extra special. New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Score big with DraftKings all college football season long. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code PFF. That's code PFF for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet 5 bucks. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text HOPE-N-Y, which is 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gamblers. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gambling resources, See dkng.co slash ftball. Um, next, want to get into one more wide receiver situation before jumping into the tight ends, and that is the New England Patriots, where they played a mix of starters and backups throughout the entire first half of their final preseason game. Uh, throughout the first two games of the preseason, we saw Jacoby Brissett start the games and then mostly veteran receivers play with Brissett and then Drake May take over uh, in the first quarter and play a lot in the first half of games and a lot of the younger receivers have been playing with May. But in this game, we saw a bit more of a mix, guys rotating in and out a lot more than they were in the first two preseason games and saw a bit more of a split of how these wide receivers positions could be taking shape. Uh, Throughout the preseason, they have been pretty clear about having one wide receiver at X, one wide receiver at Z, one in the slot, not really mixing and matching who's playing what positions too much, and that continued to be the case in this game. So uh, we'll start off with the X receivers. Uh, Tyquan Thornton has started all three preseason games. In the first two games, he was rotating in and out a bit with Jalen Rager, but in this game, Thornton was pretty clearly the starting X receiver. Expect that to be the case week one. Uh, It was Javon Baker who's been playing the X with the backups. He was the first one to substitute in for Thornton in this one. So it seems like Rager has fallen down to third on this depth chart. 
And that means there's a pretty decent chance that he won't be making the roster. Uh, he has been returning a lot of both kick returns and punt returns throughout the preseason. But the Patriots also have other players who could take those roles. So unless the Patriots decide they want to keep seven wide receivers and Kendrick Bourne starts the season on an injury list, then I don't expect Rager to be on this team over the next 24, 48 hours. Um, do expect Baker to be the backup and at least a chance for Baker to see more time as the season progresses, but he didn't see a ton of time, just a couple of snaps late in the first quarter, a couple of snaps late in the second quarter in this one. Uh, at the Z receiver, it was KJ Bourne or Osborne who started the game and he's been the starting uh, Z receiver throughout the preseason. Uh, first two games, first round rook- or rookie Jalen Polk, uh, rotated in a little bit at Z receiver with the starters, then continued playing with the backups. In this one, the two rotated in and out a bit. It was a pretty close to even split on the first three drives. Osborne playing a couple more snaps than Polk on those drives, uh, but they were just the two receivers to have that position throughout the first half. Um, in the slot, it was Demario Douglas for the first three drives, only played an 11 personnel. Uh, It was the second straight preseason game where he didn't play at all in two wide receiver sets, which is pretty significant. Played significantly in that role last season. So I would expect this to hurt Douglas's fantasy potential. Um, He only played on the first three drives, so his snap count is a little bit deceiving because he just was pulled out of the game before other wide receivers. But we did see K.J. Osborne play two drives in the slot. It's the first time all preseason that he had that role. And then Jalen Polk, who had been playing in the slot at times with the backups, uh, took the two-minute drill from the slot. So it's not just that Douglas might not see as much playing time because he's only playing in 11 personnel, but there's a chance that there will be some snaps in 11 personnel where he's not even on the field with both Osborne and Polk being on the field at the same time. So um, that's not great news for Douglas's fantasy potential. Probably not someone that I'm going to be targeting much in later rounds, even though I do think he's a talent player i do think i'll have a couple good games definitely okay with him in something like best ball where you don't have to worry about those start set decisions but someone that i'm probably not drafting and then poke is someone that i'm still fine drafting i still think he's going to get a starting job at some point sooner rather than later but not going to be starting him week one just because he is currently still in more of a rotational role and it is worth noting kendrick Bourne has been out this entire preseason he is going to throw a wrench into somewhere in this wide receiver rotation at some point this season. So uh, even though this is how everything looks now, I expect the situation to continue to evolve early in the season and throughout the season. Uh, Next, going to jump into two tight end situations before wrapping things up. We'll start with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and this is just a continued trend of what we have seen all preseason long. Um, It's the fact that Arthur Smith is now the offensive coordinator for the Steelers, we saw with the Tennessee Titans them use a tight end rotation that made players like Johnny Smith uh, not be a fantasy starter because he was only playing in certain situations. And then he did the same thing in Atlanta where Kyle Pitts was rotated out a lot more than we wanted to see. And therefore he wasn't a starter most seasons with Arthur Smith as offensive coordinator. Uh, now we're starting to see the same thing in Pittsburgh where uh, they played their starters for one drive. Friar uh, only played in two of those five snaps. Uh, They continued playing on the second drive, a mix of starters and backups, and the tight ends continued to rotate. Uh, Darnell Washington, Michael Pruitt, still clearly the backup tight ends. They continue playing even further on with backups. They are playing more in run blocking situations where Friar Muth is playing more in passing situations. But over the course of these three preseason games, it's still pretty concerning usage for Friar Muth. Um, He has played in 31 of a possible 53 offensive snaps on all of the drives where Friar Muth was in for over the course of the three games. Uh, That's a 58% snap rate, which is much lower than you would expect for someone of his talent or for a fantasy starting tight end in general. Um, As I mentioned, expect him more in for pass plays, but he's only run a route on 61% of the Steelers pass plays on the drives that Friar Muth has been in for. So there's been plenty of pass plays where Friar Muth was rotating in and out of the game and he just was not on the field. Um, He's been taking 63% of snaps in 11 personnel, 27% of snaps in 12 personnel, um, all of the snaps in 13 personnel when the three tight ends are in, and 50% of 21 personnel snaps. So a lot of teams where they have a tight end rotation, it's they're playing a lot in 11 personnel, 
not playing as much in 21 personnel. But with Friar Muth, it's pretty well mixed, and that's something that we have seen for these Arthur Smith offenses is that, yeah, there's tendencies of one guy being more of a receiver, other guys being more blockers, but they want to keep rotating those tight ends in and out regardless of the uh, personnel grouping outside of the formation to not tip their hand to the defense, and that's been Arthur Smith's philosophy. I expect that to continue to be the philosophy in the regular season, so... Uh, Friar Muth currently has an ADP around tight end 14, one of the top backup tight ends getting taken in fantasy drafts, but I would not be drafting him there. I would not be drafting him at all at this point. A lot of other tight ends where they're going to have a full-time role, and I'd be much more trusting having them in my fantasy lineup just because of the amount of playing time and this just concern about the Steelers' offense in general this season being that they don't know who their quarterback is at this point, that might be changing throughout the year. So a little, a pretty decent amount of concern about Friar Moot's fantasy value this season. A last tight end situation I want to cover today, and that is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, for the Steelers, this was a pretty big red flag throughout the preseason for Friar Muth, for Evan Ingram. Uh, this is just a little bit of caution here. Um, we saw this in the first preseason game uh, that Ingram played, he played six out of the nine snaps with the starters. Um, so 66% of the snaps when he was typically playing around 79, 80% of snaps last season. So it was a little bit lower than what we expected, but all it would have taken was Ingram playing one more snap and it wouldn't have been anything alarming in that game. But in this game, he played 16 of 23 snaps with the starters. Uh, that is a 65% snap rate. Again, a bit lower than what we expected. We've been seeing Luke Farrell rotate in a bit more. Um, the tendency is still fairly strong that if Ingram's on the field, they're going to be passing in those situations. And if he's off the field, they're going to be running more. So it's mostly running plays that he's mixing. But teams uh, similar to the Falcons can't just tip their hand and say, anytime that Luke Farrell's on the field, we're going to be running the ball. So they have to have at least some plays where Farrell is on the field and they're passing. If Farrell is going to see this much playing time. And similarly, uh, Brendan Strange getting a little bit involved in the offense as well. So uh, I could very well see Ingram see less playing time this season than he saw last season with a lot of that being run plays, but also seeing a few fewer pass routes this season. Um, he did score two touchdowns in this game, which uh, somewhat noteworthy because he played extremely well last season when Christian Kirk was not in the game. And then earlier in the season, he was just averaging 10.4 fantasy points per game, which is a low level tight end one number. So it was kind of amusing to me, at least that Christian Kirk did not play in this preseason game. And then Ingram had those two touchdowns. Um, if Ingram does continue to be the red zone threat throw over guys like Gabe Davis, Brian Thomas Jr., guys who are known for scoring touchdowns, if Ingram's still the favorite, then none of this is going to matter too much because Ingram will just score a lot of touchdowns, and that's what will end up mattering. But if we do start to see Gabe Davis taking more touchdowns, Brian Thomas taking more touchdowns, Christian Kirk return to the lineup, and then this tight end rotation happening i do think that could push ingram down a little bit in terms of his fantasy potential still likely to be a fantasy starter even in that situation but just a little bit of concern there and he was already someone that i was concerned about in general because of the wide receivers in jacksonville and because he does not grade as well as other receiving tight ends uh, so that'll wrap it up with the recap. I just went over a couple situations today. If you do go to pff.com right now, you can see my top 10 recap where I went over these as well as a couple other situations. Also have a complete uh, week three recap going over notes for all 16 or all 16 games, all 32 teams. And then also have a comprehensive preseason recap. The first time I've done this where I've gone over what happened in all three teams or all three games for all of the teams at quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end. So a pretty comprehensive recap there that you can go through. Also, if you get a subscription to pff.com right now uh, with PFF Plus, that'll give you access to premium stats. While I go over a lot of usage with the starters for the preseason, that'll give you usage for all of the backups. Also, all of the grades for all of the players. I just kind of go over um, how the players are used, but if you want to know how well the players play throughout the preseason, uh, PFF Plus with the premium stats is an excellent resource. Also, with um, the fantasy drafts coming up, with this being the huge weekend for fantasy drafts upcoming, if you want to prepare, the mock draft simulator, and then the live draft assistant um, will help you immensely with your draft. 
um, using a lot of the strategies that I have and using my rankings to help you pick who you want for your fantasy drafts. And of course, throughout the week, we'll have a ton of my articles updated for the most up-to-date information, especially with cut down day tomorrow. And then John and I will also be back Wednesday for our big preview for the upcoming season. So with that, peace out.